So today we're going to be talking about part two in a three-part series that will make you a wiser when spending your money on books. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking part two in my little three-part series of smart book buying or wise book spending. And today we're going to be talking about budgeting, which is very grown up and not something all of us are good practice in, especially even myself. So it doesn't matter if I'm 30 years old, this is a good practice you need to get into from start to finish. So if you're still in high school, if you're my age or older than me, this is all for you guys. So in my first video, I talked about content and how people are sensitive to different things. Different people don't like different things. People love different things or people are triggered by different things and how content kind of plays into the money that we invest in certain things in our books or in our hobbies. It's hard to drop like $20 or $18 of hard-earned money onto something that has content you don't appreciate, trigger warnings, or just books you didn't like, or stuff that you're sensitive towards in it and you just don't enjoy it and then you feel like it's a waste of money. So that's what I talked about in the first video. I'll leave that linked up here for you guys to go and check that out and we will proceed with video two. So in video two, I'm going to be talking about some basic budgeting ideas that you guys can follow as well as research. And this goes into researching the stuff that you want to invest in and some things that are just very important for that. So the first thing I want to mention is having a budget. It's important. If you're in high school, if you're my age, if you're older than me, it doesn't matter what part of life you're in, having a budget is always crucial. And if you're in high school, start now so that you have those good spending habits, those good budgeting habits, and it just makes you that much more prepared. I wish they had taught us this in high school. Honestly, I wish there was just a budgeting class in high school because that would have made my life so much easier right now. So with budgeting, look at what is coming in and look at what is going out. So look at your income and your allowance or what have you and look at what's coming in. That is what you have every month and then from that subtract all your necessities. Your bills, your loan payments, anything you throw into savings, consider like savings a necessity as well because you want to build up a savings account, you want to build up for paying off any debt or future loans and you want to have kind of an emergency cushion in there as well. So look at all your outgoing, your bills, your loans, your par car payments, your savings account, uh, subtract all of your necessities and then build an entertainment fund out of that. When I mentioned the savings account, make sure that at any age you have a thousand dollars emergency fund. This came from the Dave Ramsey Smart Money Management Program. It also has a radio show, so if you can find a way to stream or listen to his radio show, it's amazing. He's so smart and so practical, and a lot of friends and even family in my life have kind of passed on some of their information to me because I didn't actually take his course, but they've kind of passed on ideas and encouragement to me through that, so you should look him up. I'll find some links and leave them down below. So you should always have that kind of that emergency fund built up. So like at about a thousand dollars. So if your glasses break, if you chip a tooth, if you have a medical emergency or your car needs to get fixed, like you have that emergency fund that you're not pulling out of other funds. So make sure all of your necessities are covered. Do allow yourself a little bit of fun, a little bit of spending, as long as you're not taking away from anything else. So put stuff into a savings account specifically that is going to go towards your fund spending. Even if you have to take the cash out and put it into a jar in your room, and once you get to a certain amount, you can take yourself out for a treat and buy a book or buy a new release, what have you. So budget wisely, use some of these ideas. They're pretty good or look up some ideas from Dave Ramsey. They're pretty good. There are resources out there for you guys. So look up some really great budgeting ideas and get yourself into the practice of budgeting. Once you have your budget set and once you have your like book money allotment, there's still that idea of I want to make sure that I'm putting my money wisely into things and that I'm not wasting my hard earned money that I wanted to enjoy life with, you know, your fun spending. So what I like to do is research. And they're not telling you you need to extensively research every book you buy. For example, I will auto buy Marissa Meyer. She hasn't disappointed me yet with content or with her writing and her storytelling. I will auto buy Melanie Dickerson. So there's authors that I'm totally cool with upright buying without having to research the world out of and 
you know, make sure that I'm 100% okay. What it comes down to is if there are books that you are wary about, if your books you're not 110% sure, whether it be a new author, a new genre, a new series that you're kind of looking into, and you're kind of like, I don't know if I would like that, I don't know if it'd be good for me for content wise, that's when you want to start researching. So one thing you can do for sure is follow some good reviewers. Follow some reviewers on Goodreads that rate content. One of them I like to follow is Becca from Awesome Book Nerd. She, at the bottom of her reviews, will say um, sexual content PG-13, violence PG whatever. So she'll give like a very brief kind of a content rating, drugs and alcohol, like that kind of a content rating at the end. So you have a basic idea of what's going to be in the book. So then you can judge from there where you want to go with that. Another one is Lindsay from Books for Christian Girls. She breaks everything down, like language, faith elements, sexual content. She'll break it all down for you. There might be a lot, a little bit more chance of a spoiler in her reviews, but if you are still kind of unsure, she can break the whole thing down for you and you'll know for sure. I myself am a reviewer who like to do content kind of heads up. So find people similar or find people that you like that kind of give you that content overall instead of just their overall thoughts and opinions about a book, but will also give you the idea of what a content is like in a book. I'll leave some Goodreads links to some reviewers down below that I found that I trusted. Um, Melanie is another great person for great reviews. Um, anything really that she recommends, you can kind of guarantee the content to be A-OK. -okay. And if it's not, she will tell you. So shout out to my friend Melanie, always. So there's just some fantastic reviewers out there that you can find that will give you those reviews. So check that out. Even just reading other reviews, if they don't give you that content warning, sometimes they'll come across and bring up something that was in the book that might g give you a hint as to what the type of book and book content is going to be like. Another step you can do is just borrow it from the library. The library is a fantastic resource. My library card cost me $10 and I have unlimited access to books audiobooks, ebooks, movies, games, like you have unlimited access. Go spend $10, get yourself a library card. If there's like a brand new book coming out and you're not too sure if you're going to like it or not, borrow it from the library. I've done this with the Lunar Chronicles, found out I love them. I've done this with the Kiss of Deception. I was okay with that one. Would I have bought it? Maybe not. But you know, I've tried a lot of them. I tried the Match Trilogy, ended up hating it. So it's kind of like a try before you buy. And like I said, you don't have to do this with every book. There's books that you're unsure of. So book reviewers, library, there's been a lot of great resources to just look into. And that's why we review books. This is why we spend our time reading, but also reviewing the books for you guys. Reviews, I saw someone post on Twitter somewhere. I wish I remembered who that was, but it is to somebody on Twitter. It's not from me. Reviews are for the readers, not for the authors. So we don't review books so the authors get praise or, you know, get admiration or whatever for their books. It's not for the authors. We review books for you guys, the readers. So you know if you're going to love this book, you know if you're going to like this book, you know if it probably doesn't sound like it's for me. That's why we review books. So take that resource and use it to the fullest extent. That's what that section for is in Goodreads. Librarians are also good for this. They'll also give you good recommendations and you don't have to commit to buying a book. You can still just take the book home and try it out. If you're halfway through a series and you find yourself loving the series, you can maybe start buying the series and investing in the series because it's become something you really enjoy. For example, like I said, that's what happened with me with the Lunar Chronicles, Entwined hunted like there's so many books on my shelf now that I originally read from the library and I was like yeah you know what I'm going to invest in this like Marissa Meyer started off as a library borrowing author and now she's an autobi author so it happens and you don't have to borrow every book you ever read from the library unless you want to because I know some of us just like to buy and like to own so I hope that made sense for you guys I if you have any questions down below if you need some clarification on some things I'm always open to answering questions. I really enjoy actually talking with you guys. If you have your own tips and tricks as to how you save and budget and put aside stuff for money, or if you have any reviewers that you follow that you trust that you're like, yeah, she liked that book, she said it had this in it, leave those people down below or give me some recommendations for some great reviewers and some great tips and tricks. I'd love to hear from you guys on this conversation. 
As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at part three.